Foremost news from Southeast Asia. Good morning, this is Arlene, and you are listening to Durian ASEAN as usual on our ASEAN Daily. We will bring you news from Southeast Asia. So, on this very beautiful Friday morning, I'm going to share with you news from Malaysia. At United Nations, our Prime Minister Najib Raza made an impression plea to reject IS or Islamic State. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Raza has made an impassioned plea for the rejection of the so-called Islamic State philosophy and for the Ummah to take decisive action against those who seek to hijack Islam. In a speech delivered at the 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly here on Thursday, Najib condemned the so-called Islamic State and called for the world to unite in taking action against the organization. This is what he said. The so-called Islamic State knows nothing of Islam's noble ideals, of its compassion, or of the solemn duty to care for and learn about our fellow men. They are violating the divine will. They are desecrating the name of our religion through their self-proclaimed caliph, to which no true Muslim will pledge. This is the message that we must spread to Muslim and non-Muslim. And I call on the Ummah to rise with one voice and let the world ring when we say to ISIS, you do not represent us. That was a staunch uh, speech by our Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak. And besides that, he also praised the Malaysia security forces for the strong action that they have taken and Beyond that, he called for greater cooperation among nation states and their respective militaries and intelligence services to combat these threats. According to Najib Razak, they have identified 39 Malaysians who have travelled to join IS and they have arrested over 100 of Malaysian citizens suspected of links to IS. And definitely, these threats are real. These are people who want to bring terror to Malaysia's streets. They will not stand for it. Neither will they succeed. And according to Najib as well, they must strive harder to combat this threat. Together, militaries and intelligence services need to share information and countries need to, co- to collaborate more. To daring to preemptively arrest as necessary. On the other hand, ASEAN countries adopt KL declaration in combating transnational crime. During the ministerial meeting of ASEAN, they acknowledged the emergence of new forms of transnational crimes as reported by the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, including those closely linked to the issue or irregular movement of persons. They also endorsed the illicit trafficking of wildlife and timber and also people smuggling as the new areas of transnational crimes supported the work towards the elevation of the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty in criminal matters as well as to support the work of the ASEAN Law Ministers meeting to enhance cooperation on the issue of extradition. According to Zahid Hamidi, he later handed the declaration to ASEAN Deputy Secretary General Hiru Balan Velupila Ponudura as a symbol that ASEAN member had ratified the document. They also agreed to preserve ASEAN's central role and region's interest in, a, in appropriation to regional frameworks and mechanisms, as well as expand the scope of each responsibility when necessary. From ASEAN, we move on to Singapore. So Prime Minister Lee and has announced 
a new Singapore cabinet and they are all of them have sworn in apparently his new cabinet with a combination of experience and new ministers is designed to face complex challenges for Singapore that require fresh and bold ideas and close coordination across multiple agencies. In his speech, Mr Lee explained the need for coordinating man- ministers, noting that Singapore is facing complex challenges that require fresh and bold ideas as well as the careful balancing of different goals and close coordination across multiple agencies. He said that this is what his new cabinet with a combination of experience and new ministers is designed to do. Mr Lee also reinforced his team with backbenchers and newly elected MPs and entrusted major responsibilities to younger ministers, including first-time Member of Parliament Ng Chi Meng and Ong Yi Kung, who will be the acting education ministers. They have to be tested, learned and ropes, prove themselves and shake down as a team. There you go. The new cabinet of Singapore. Combination of experience and new ministers. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue with the political news of Southeast Asia. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hey, welcome back. This is Arlene again at ASEAN Daily. Continuing our commentary on the news on Southeast Asia, Thai activists crash government websites in censorship protests. Thai activists have attacked the Thai government website on Wednesday to protest the government's plan to create a single gateway to control internet usage in the country. It is believed online activists use social media to mobilize supporters who then went to these websites when they click to refresh the pages continuously. This caused a traffic overload in temporary shutdown at least eight government websites on Wednesday night. By Thursday morning, the attacks were scaled back and the website became inaccessible again. The attacks appear to be a response to a leaked government document that has revealed a cabinet resolution in June calling for the establishment of a single gateway to control the internet in Thailand. The aim was to prevent Thai from accessing websites with inappropriate content. Quote unquote. The Information and Communication Technology Minister Utama Savanayana denied the existence of this cabinet resolution but explained the government's motives. He said, There are many types of information online. Some are good, some are not so good. So we were thinking about how to manage this. This is what he expressed. On the other side of Southeast Asia, the Philippines, close ally of all Philippines Aquino, faces graph investigation. A top advisor to Philippine President Benigno Aquino is facing a corruption investigation, a government agency said on Wednesday. A potential blow for the president who has built a reputation as a graph fighter. Aquino has made fighting corruption a priority of his administration, but he has struggled to keep scandals involving allies and friends at arm's length. Graph allegations are far from new in the in the Philippines and little has changed despite Aquino's reform drives. Abad, who served as Aquino's campaign manager for the 2007 Senate election and the presidential election in 2010, denied wrongdoing and said he welcomed the investigation of the disbursement program. While on the other hand, Aquino will step down next year at the end of a single five-year term as allowed under the Constitution. A May presidential election will be closely watched by investors who fear that the political succession in one of Asia's fastest growing economies could derail gains made during his rule. Moving on to the north, uh, which is Vietnam, jails journalists for spying for China. 
Hmm. A Vietnamese journalist has been found guilty of spying for China and sentenced to a six-year jail term by a Hanoi court after a three-hour trial, his lawyer said on Thursday. Ha Hui Hong, who had worked for a foreign minister, sorry, a foreign ministry-run magazine, was jailed on Wednesday for colluding with a Chinese spy and would appeal. He said, lawyer Ha Hong Ha Hui Son told Reuters, he was found guilty of supplying information and material about Vietnam's economy and its leaders to the Chinese government. Issues related to China are highly sensitive in Vietnam, where the ruling Communist Party shares close but rocky ties with Beijing, despite deep-rooted resentment among its people and territorial squabbling over the South China Sea. Hong had denied espionage and said he believed the spy had been a fellow journalist and the information he had shared had been in the public domain. We will take a short break. When we return, we'll discuss further on the economic side of Southeast Asia. ASEAN Dailies First and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Here you are back again with Arlene on the economic side of Southeast Asia. So why Philippines has second highest income tax in ASEAN? Come ASEAN integration by year end, the Philippines will have the most uninviting tax system in the region. The Philippines currently has the second highest personal and highest corporate income tax system among its ASEAN six peers. The Philippines has been struggling with physical def- deficits for some years now and one way to fix this is to impose hefty taxes on its system citizens and corporations. Thus, uh, they are seeing tax rates increase to the current level. Bank of Philippines Islands Research Officer Nicholas Antonio Mapa said in an email, Currently, the Philippines is the darling of the emerging market space with uh, an improving fiscal sector. Tax collections are on the rise, although slow spending has also yielded better fiscal numbers. But the neighbors are with lower tax rates are now struggling to grow their government running gigantic deficits to GDP. On the other hand, A mass chicken cult in Indonesia after trade policies backfire. Indonesia is set to call millions of chickens to ease supply swings in the local meat market caused by a drive for self-sufficiency, the latest in a string of food policies that have backfired for the government of President Jokowi. Since Coming to power in October, Widodo, or better known as Jokowi, has been pursuing food self-sufficiency to protect farmers. But the outcome has often been vi- volatile prices and concern from investors eroding support for the government. A reluctance to import rice has made Indonesia wholesale prices among the most expensive in the region this year, while delays in issuing raw sugar import permits caused local refineries to close. To ensure stable prices, Indonesia plans to call 6 million breeders chickens starting this week. Industry sources said the increasing consumption isn't just about increasing production capacity, added Crisantono, who uses only one name. It is also about whether the consumer can absorb the product that wasn't calculated carefully at a time. Moving on to arts and culture, but we'll take a short break first. <laughs> ASEAN Dailies, first and the foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. Welcome back on the ASEAN Daily Arts and Culture. So Ying Ying to give birth to Hong Kong's first 
Panda Cup. A giant panda in Hong Kong called Ying Ying is pregnant and due to give birth within a week, officials at an amusement park said. This year, so many pandas are giving birth from Washington to Malaysia to now... Hong Kong. The cub will be the first giant panda to be born in Hong Kong. Earlier this year, 10-year-old Ying Ying mated naturally and was also artificially inseminated. However, the staff at Ocean Park are unsure which method has resulted in the successful pregnancy. Ying Ying was sent to mainland China, Sichuan province this spring to take part in a breeding program. So from Panda, we move on to Korea uh, about a movie festival. It is actually Asia's largest movie festival set to kick off in Busan. Asia's largest movie festival kicking off on Thursday at a time when the region's influence on the global movie industry is on the rise. Entering its 20th year in the South Korea port city, the Busan International Film Festival saw its influence and size expand in stride with the growth of box office sales in the region. Asian countries feel growth in the global film industry last year, while box office sales in the U.S. and Canada declined. With box office sales of U.S. $12.4 billion in 2014, the Asian region is the biggest and fastest growing movie market in the world. This is according to the Motion Picture Association of America. According to Kim Ji Siok, the Busan Film Festival executive programmer, there are a lot of movies completed by support from the Asian Cinema Fund introduced in Busan for the first time in the world and then went on to international acclaim. The festival has not been without challenges though during its 20-year stride. The most recent setback was the budget cut by South Korea's government after the festival went ahead with the screening of a controversial documentary last year despite pressure not to. Another festival that is kicking off is the Luang Prabang Film Festival, celebrating the best of Southeast Asian cinema. The Luang Prabang Film Festival was founded by Gabriel Cooperman, an American expat who previously worked in the film industry and television in New York with a strong passion for both film and the old capital city. Thank you for listening to us and you can always follow us on our social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But don't forget to listen to us live either on your mobile by downloading our Duran Asiam app or on your laptop or, and by, by going to duranasian.com and you can actually listen to on our Facebook too. Uh, there's a tab where you can listen live. Thank you and have a great weekend.